We are live. Hi, everybody. Good to see you all. Hope everybody's having a wonderful day or morning or afternoon or evening. Hope it's not too late over there. Remember, these are recorded. Um, if you're tuning in for the first time, uh, hi, my name is Ramon. Uh, we're doing a free JavaScript boot camp in collaboration with Class Central. And we're using Free Code Camp's um, JavaScript certification for algorithms and data structures. And uh, yeah, we're uh, about four. Is this the fifth? This is our fifth week doing this. <gasps> My goodness, next week is the last week. Hello from Canada. Hey, Jolene. I love seeing folks. I love seeing familiar names. Hello from Morocco. Hi. Ah, oh, good to see everyone. Hello from Kenya, Team Pat Pat. Hey, Kaiga, good to see you. Yeah, good to see everybody here. Hey, Catherine. Hey, JS folks from Zimbabwe. Ah, from NOL, uh, NOLA. Hey, Norman. Ah, yeah. So let's check in with everybody. Um, hope everybody's doing well. Let's dive right in to doing some JavaScript today. It is so exciting to be here and do this with all of you. I'm just going to move my chat over to the other one, to the other window, to the other screen, so that I can keep an eye for any urgent questions that come up. Today, we will be doing another lesson as usual. It will not be cut short. Thank you for your patience with me yesterday. We had to cut a little bit short to go into our guest session. Wasn't that great? If you missed it, don't worry. Um, it's all recorded on the Class Central YouTube channel. Um, Oh, folks are asking, how's Jess? I haven't heard from her yet. I hope she's doing better. Um, sending our thoughts, of course, and all of our best. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's jump right in. Yes, I said, the recordings are up on the YouTube channel, which you can access through the bootcamp here on classcentral.com. Um, you'll find everything there as, as well as the forum and the Discord. So if you've got any questions and stuff that I don't get to answer at Q&A today, don't worry. We will get right to that in after our Q&A. And you can ask me and the rest of the learners via Discord or the forum. Yeah. Just wasn't feeling so well this morning. Um, but I want to, of course, respect her privacy. So, yeah. Let's, let's hop right in. So yesterday... Um, we will, we, yesterday we did, we started with basic algorithm scripting. Um, we didn't finish it and I assigned us homework, the rest of the lessons there. If you didn't finish them, don't worry. This is a self-paced bootcamp. So you could do them at your own pace. And yeah, today we're going to do object oriented programming. So I want to preface that a little bit, if I may, by talking a little bit about some of you might've dealt with some object orientation before. Um, it's pretty commonly used in modern software development as a way to have a hierarchy of classes and objects. But in JavaScript, that's a little bit different. Here we use something called the prototype. JavaScript is developed with something called the, the prototype uh, model. So I'm just going to, I hope everybody's got something to keep themselves hydrated. I definitely need to. Yeah. So what are we going to do today? Today we're going to cover all about object orientation, uh, as well as the this keyword, which we've seen a little bit, prototype chains, constructors, and inheritance. Now, don't worry. A lot of this seems like jargon. New Orleans, Louisiana. Oh, lovely. Lovely. Good to know. <laughs> Thank you. So let's expand our courses. So we're going to get, as usual, through as much of this as possible. Um, hopefully we'll do all of it. If we don't manage it, I'll ask you the I'll assign the rest as uh, self-paced homework. And tomorrow we'll continue on to the last um, project. So yeah, let's start with something we've seen plenty of times before, creating a basic JavaScript object. So an an object, an object literal is defined by these curly braces. So, We've seen this before, so I'm not going to spend too much time going over it. Let's read our exercise here. Um, we'll create a dog object with name and num legs properties and set them to a string and number respectively. So let's do just that. So we've got our dog. I'm going to console log that dog. Yeah. So right now, console logging the dog object will give us an empty object, clearly because we don't have anything in here. So let's give that 
object the two properties we want. First is name, and we want to set it to a string. So the name, uh, something with G, let's go with Gilberto. Cool. So that's our name of our dog. <laughs> Maybe not the most common name for a dog, but names are names. <laughs> and then we'll be num legs, which will be a number. So this dog will have four legs. Check it out. So we've got an object now with two properties, name and num legs, the values of which are Gilberto and four, respectively. So I think we've done everything we want to do here. So let's run our tests. Nothing we haven't seen before. And there we go. Pat, pat. Cool. Starting nice and easy breezy. Next, we're going to use dot notation to access the properties of an object. Again, stuff we've seen before. Let's see our exercise. Print both properties of the dog object to your console. Cool. So this dog is called Spot, also has four legs. <laughs> Carlos says he is a good Brazilian musician. I agree. <laughs> um, that's the Gilberto. Sorry, <laughs> got completely distracted. Uh, console log, we want to print both, both properties of the dog object to your console. So we want to do two console logs. Uh, so let's see, dog.name will give us spot. And yep, console log. And then we want to print the other project ob, blah, blah, property, which is num legs. And we're using dot notation. We've done this a couple times already. So spot and four. Good. Let's run our tests. And there we go. Cool. Pat, pat. Awesome. A little pat on the back to get ourselves motivated. Um, ooh, in this one, we're going to create a method on an object. And we've done. I think we've done this a couple times already. If not, we'll just review it here. Using the dog object, give it a method called say legs. So let's see. Dog name spot num legs for dog dot say legs. So we're going to define a function called say legs. Let's do that. Say legs, which is a function at, uh, it should return the sentence, this dog has four legs. Return. Ooh, and we're going to use something we learned in uh, ES6, which is to use template literals. Actic. Do this dog has. I'm going to use the dollar sign notation to put in that expression for how many for the num legs property. Legs. Now, we've seen before that we can access this with num legs. Uh, let's console log that. This dog has four legs. Now, another thing we can do, though I don't recommend this, and we're going to see why in the next exercise, is that because we have a variable called dog, we're storing this object in dog, we can actually access dog.numlegs. Now, some of you in the chat might be thinking, oh, no, 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 this is not a good idea. What if we, for example, assign the variable dog to something else? Or what if we change something in the, no, no, no. But it's something we can do, and we'll get into why we don't want to do that in the next exercise. Now, Carlos here has a suggestion. We can do it without the colon and function, right? Well, let's give it a try. So if we remove this, and this is something that comes from ES6, I believe. Yes. We can define a function in a, as a property of a object like this. Say legs, this is a nice, the term is syntactic sugar. <laughs> and what essentially what that means is just a nice little syntax or way of writing the code that makes our lives a little bit easier. So this is correct. And the more, let's say, old school way of doing it is this one. I said, neither one of us wrong. Totally fine. <gasps> Johannes says, but then you can't use this. Is that right? <gasps> really? Let's have a look. Uh, not sure I understand. I think you can. Again, maybe I misunderstood. We're, we're going to take a look at the this keyword in the next exercise. Um, Carlos says, easier to read for me. I agree. I agree. Yeah. So let's run our tests, see how it goes. 
Nice. Pat, pat. Cool. Folks, so I'm doing this in collaboration with Class Central. Uh, and we are, um, not, so we're not associated with Free Code Camp. Free Code Camp is a set of volunteers offering this content for you, all open source. And if you can, they would highly appreciate you sending them a couple bucks. But if you cannot, absolutely do not feel stressed to do so. We are, this is something, for example, that I can do later on in my career. And I do it in a different account. <laughs> cool. So, ah, here we go. Yes. Now, ah, in the example, it was using dot, dot name, for example. This dog has dog dot num legs legs. Let's console log that real quick. So the problem is, if, say, down the line, we set something else to be the value of dog, and we change the value in that object, then things get a little bit messy. And this is why with the this keyword, what we can do, <laughs> as, as Free Code Camp says, this is a deep topic. <laughs> But in this context, this refers to the object that the method is associated with. So in this case, this refers to that dog object. And the value, and depending in which scope you are, this, this, the, the, the keyword this, it gets a little bit hard to say. <laughs> um, the keyword this changes what it is. I would recommend if you want to learn more about this, the the this keyword, um, to check out. MDN, fantastic resource, will give you everything you need to know about the this keyword. So inside this object, the this keyword refers to the object itself. Let's, in fact, for fun, let me expand on this a little bit. Um, what if I console log this? See, this in this con the this keyword in this context refers to the object. Oh, check it out. And function of the say legs is a function. Makes sense. It is a function. People PMT says if I use num legs, just num legs, I guess. It gives me undefined. Let's give it a try. I'm gonna remove my console log. Num legs is not defined, of course, because we don't have a local variable or object or function uh, or any kind of object called num legs. Num legs is a property of the dog object. So to get that property, we need to call this dot num legs. We want to get the num legs property. It's not a variable. It's a property of this, which in this context is dog. It's a little bit weird, um, but some practice will definitely get you used to that. So modify dog.saylegs method to remove any reference to dog. Use the duck example for guidance, which, if I'm not mistaken, uses this.name. Whew. There we go. Let's run our tests. And there we go. Pat, pat. Ooh. Ooh. If other class extends class dog, you can't say you can't call say legs if it was defined up with dog dot say legs. Now, we're gonna get a little bit. Well, this is about class extending. We we haven't gotten there yet. So let's say, um, let's get there later. So let's go to the next one. A constructor function. So let's take a let's take a look at this. This function bird with a capital B will give us, ah, see, this, this, and this for these different attributes. Now, we've covered constructors before, haven't we? In ES6, constructors are given to classes to create an object, right? So bear with me. This isn't all too different. Let's create our own constructor, and let's do it from the exercise. Create a constructor dog, so function dog, and we've done that with properties name, color, and num like so that they are set to a string, a string, and a number respectively. Cool. Name equals something with G, um, something in English, Ilford. Then we've got this dot color. Uh, 
Con. Spotted. Spotty. A color. Let's say it is. <laughs> Just for fun. And num legs. We've done num legs before. This dot num legs. Set that to four. Now, let's call that and see what happened. Oh, Catherine says orange. Okay. 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 Yeah, let's do orange. Orange. Cool. Thank you for the suggestion. So let's console log. Now we need to call that constructor. And this is going to look super similar to something we've done in the past. New dog. So if, we've, if you're familiar with classes, this is the sort of old school JavaScript way of defining, um, of defining uh, constructors for objects, right? So new dog, name is Guilford, color is orange, and numlegs is four. Quick little sip. Now let's play around with this a little bit. What if we make two dogs? Const dog one. Let's call it dog one. New dog. And const dog two. New dog. So we have two dogs, okay? And I want to know if they're equal. I, I, this is seriously like a tangent that I'm going on. Is it equals to dog two? What do we think? They're false. And that's because we have used um, we have used the constructor to create two different objects. So even though they have the same values, they're not the same object. How weird is that? If you if you're referring if you're familiar with how RAM in a computer or memory in a computer works, they are using different places to store the, these two different copies of data, but they're new instances of a dog, so they're fundamentally different. New, eh, Richard says it, new instances of dog. I'm going to take a quick moment um, here. Ah, thank you. Can, we, can you tell me, please, why we use a new, the word new? So this is a constructor. Right. So what it what, what it does is it constructs an object for us. This is this function gives us an constructs an object. That's why it's called a constructor. Right. So even so, what even though we're let, let, sorry, let's see what happens if we just call it without the new. Let's do that. Type error cannot set properties of undefined setting name. So what we're doing here is calling the function, but given it's not being used as a constructor, JavaScript goes like, hold on, I don't know what this is. I don't know what the this keyword refers to. So it kind of gets confused. So, ooh, um, yeah. So Kabi asks, how can we create an object here? And well, in a way, we just did, didn't we? This is by using the new keyword. This is how we create an object from that function, using this constructor. And the way we did it in ES6 with the classes, that's how it worked. This It's doing essentially the same thing. Catherine, so how would we change the values of dog2? Well, let's do that. All we would have to do is dog2. Dot Name equals uh, Ilverta. Right? Let's console log dog two now. So at the end of the day, dog two is an object. We've just built it using a constructor. So, as Carlos says here, this is the old way to make instances. So, Rudo asks, why does this function dog not work if you write it as an ES6 arrow function? I have no idea. Let's find out. <laughs> so const dog equals. Mm -hmm. I honestly don't know. Because this is, for all intents and purposes, a function, I would suspect. Mm 
Sorry. <laughs> I guess we're going to have to find out on MDN. We'll do that in a Q&A with a little bit of investigation. But great question. Great, great question. It asks, type of a class returns function. So are classes actually functions behind the scenes? Kind of. I would recommend looking at the MDN for this. But in essence, classes are a fancy way, uh, not a fancy, a syntactic sugar. Remember I mentioned syntactic sugar before. Um, syntactic sugar around constructor classes, amongst other things, which we'll get to. Catherine asks, could you change them while declaring dog two? Yes, you can. And that's where the constructor parameters will come in. I believe it's in a next exercise. So let's hang on to that question. And people are saying super correctly, arrow functions can't access this. We can't use this in arrow functions. You can't use this with arrow functions. Thank you all for, tell for helping me with this. I love that this is a team effort. So let's go leave it as it was. Function dog and create a constructor dog. I think we've done what we wanted to do. Let's run our tests. There we go. Pat, pat. <laughs> Looks like we need to do some more research on the this to understand more. And absolutely, I want to say now, don't stress yourself out too much with trying to understand. Like, remember what that exercise says. The, this, the, this keyword is a deep subject. I'm pretty sure I saw some articles on Free Code Camp. I'm going to link them uh, after the class. Cool. So, right, right. Oh, we were just doing this. Using a constructor to create objects. So, and it says, <laughs> we've got one here. This name, Rupert. This color, brown. This num legs, four. So, Notice the new operators used when calling the constructor. This tells JavaScript to create a new instance of bird called bluebird. Right, the instance is assigned to the variable bluebird. Without the new operator, this inside the constructor would not point to the newly created object, giving unexpected results. Well, it looks like we should have uh, just kept going. <laughs> so let's... Do the exercise then. Use the dog constructor from the last session to create a new instance of dog, assigning it to a variable hound. So nothing we haven't seen from the last exercise already. Const hound equals new dog. Console, let's console log that hound. And as we saw, we created an object, assigned it to the variable hound, and it already has Rupert, name Rupert, color brown, num legs four. Cool. Nothing we haven't seen before. Run our tests. Pat, pat. Let's keep going. Now, to Catherine's question earlier, let's extend our constructors to receive arguments. So I'm just going to scroll right down because this you can all read in your time. Let's extend, create another dog constructor, which we've got here. So we've got our constructor dog. This time, set it up to take the parameters name and color, OK? Name and color. So it takes two parameters and have the property numlegs fixed at four. Then create a new dog saved in the variable terrier. Pass it two strings as arguments for the name and color properties. Let's do just that. So, um, so this dot name, remember we want to save it to this object. This dot color is equals to color. And this dot numlegs. Let's see, the, let's see in the instructions. Have the property numlegs fixed at four. So we can set it to be four here. Fantastic. Then let's create a new dog saved in the variable terrier. Const terrier. Terrier is a new dog called Gilberta. The color will be, let's go with, let's stick with orange. Orange is fun. <laughs> Console log terrier. <laughs> Catherine's, Catherine suggests the names the name Lutz. Let's do that. Cool. So name is Lutz, color is orange, and num legs is four. So we've passed in Lutz to be the name. We've passed in orange to be the color. That gets saved to this dot name and this dot color respectively. 
and numlegs will stay as four. We can change it later because it is an object. So terrier.legs equals um, five. Oh, sorry, not legs, num legs. I created a new property by accident. <laughs> there we go. Num legs is five. So Sunflare Y asks, do you have to use a semicolon between properties? Can you use a comma? Remember though that these aren't, we're not strictly using properties here. We're using, um, we're using, uh, these are JavaScript calls. So we could actually just console log A. So these are JavaScript lines. So that's why we need the semicolon. If we're declaring an object, the syntax is a little bit different. So I hope that I hope that's clear. Yeah. This looks good. I'm feeling good about this. Pass it two strings as arguments for the name and color properties. Let's run our tests. And there we go. Pat pat. Nice. Quick sip of water. Ah, yes. So we've seen this in, in um, ES6 as well. We have access to a, a keyword called instance of, which lets, uh, lets us double check that an object is an instance of a constructor. So here asks, what about putting console log inside the function? Yeah, you totally can. Check it out. Console log num bed rooms. Now, right now, it's not going to do anything because we're not calling function. We're not calling the constructor house. So let's do that. Um, let me just scroll down a little bit to see what our create a new instance of the house constructor, calling it my house. Okay, so const my house and passing a number of bedrooms. New house. How many bedrooms? Mm. I have one bedroom. Let's go with one. Now check it out. I've created that object. So console log bedroom num bedrooms, and it's console logging it already, as I call it. So yeah, you can totally cons you can put any code you want in there. <laughs> Ooh, got a question from Omran. What is the difference between const object and let object? Const means that the object cannot have it. Sorry. Const means that the variable cannot be reassigned. So you can do, if I do this, for example, I'm going to get an error. My house is read only. Const means read only variables. They can be mutated, but they can't be reassigned. If I do it with let, then it can. So hope that's, hope that's clear. I've got, I think in the Discord, I've pinned an article about the difference between const var and let. And if not, we've covered it in previous ex in previous videos as well. So then use instance of to verify that it is an instance of house. Let's do that. So my house instance of house. Did I do that right? No. <gasps> Look, this is an inconsistency in JavaScript. Most keywords in JavaScript are expected to be camel case. And this... This throws me off every time, folks. So if it happens to you, believe me, it's happened to loads of people. <laughs> See, instance of is the O is um, lowercase. So there we go. I don't know why. <laughs> it's a, let's call it a quirk. It is a quirk, but I don't know why. But instance of is all lowercase. So if it trips you up, remember, remember my word. <laughs> Now, now, my house instance of house. Look at the look at the consoles. Nothing. Why? Because this is just an expression. We're not actually doing anything with it. And instance of will have a return value of a boolean value, true or false. So let's console log it and take a look. True. So, const, so my house is an instance of house. That's where the constructor comes in. However, let's see an instance where this wouldn't be true. 
what if I had an object, right? That has num bed rooms set to one. Check it out. Even though structurally my house is identical structurally to an object built from house, the house constructor, it's not an instance of house. Yeah? This is its own kind of object. We don't have, like, it's whatever it is, it's not an instance of house. However, let's find out what it is an instance of. And you've seen this before. It's an instance of object. Right? So, my ha so an object is always an instance of an object. How weird is that? Whoa, 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 went too far. Okay. So, my house is an instance of new house with one bedroom. My house is an instance of house. Let's take this a step further. Is my house also an instance of object? Yes. You see, any object that's made by the house constructor is itself also an object. <laughs> so, let's see. Um, Zuhair asks, what is the purpose of using instance of? Ah, well, um, in several, in, in several um, I would say in several places, you might find yourself doing things like making sure that Let's say you've got different kinds of animals, dogs, cats, etc. If you want to make sure that something is a dog, you will say, okay, is this variable an instance of dog? And you don't want it to be a cat, then you'll say, else if animal instance of cat. Not the, not the most realistic um, example, but you will find yourself doing stuff like this. Is it because you, it is a command and not a property? You're not using dot. Oh, yeah. I don't. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, is it is it weird because it's not doing? Yeah, there's no dots involved here. It is a method, but I don't really know. Hmm. Yeah. It's weird, isn't it? Eon asks, when making a new instance of a constructor, is it mandatory to use brackets? Because if I console log, it seems to work with and without it as well. Well, in this case it is because we've got a parameter. Because if we do it like this, it's just gonna be like, huh, what do you mean? In this case, we need the brackets. But what if it didn't take one? Let's say our house took one room. Does that work too? Let's uh, console log my house. Well, I didn't know that. So it's one of those neat little quirks of JavaScript where you can make a new something that doesn't have parameters without the brackets. I like to, just so that I can be on the safe side, put the brackets. Again, your mileage may vary. This is a convention most likely. I like to, I recommend going with brackets. It just makes me feel comfortable. <laughs> Why is this function not returning anything? Is it because it's just setting object props? Um, well, uh, it is, isn't it? I mean, it's returning a house. We're just using it as a constructor. So it's, re oh, you mean why it's not doing a return? Ah, good question. Yeah, I think it might just have to do with how new works. This, this is a good question for MDN, I would say. Cool. Y'all ask such good questions, but I don't want to keep everybody waiting. Let's move on to the next exercise. So use an instance of to verify that it is an instance of house, not object. Nice. Cool. Let's run our tests. There we go. Pat, pat. Okay. Aha our own properties. Ah, so for anything that, so let's see what we got here. We got a bird, a bird constructor. It takes a name, this.name equals name, and it's got two legs. We make a canary, 
variable and assign it to it the value new bird and with the name Tweety. Let's console log canary. Let's just take a look at it. It is named Tweety and it's got two legs. Cool. So far, so good. Now, what this exercise is going to delve into, and we're, as we're going to find out later, name and num legs are what's called own properties. These are properties that belong to the bird constructor. Let's have a look. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to iterate over all of our properties with a for loop. Aha! And we're going to do, um, we're going to do a for in loop. What proper property in canary? So we're going to loop over all of the properties in canary. And if duck, sorry, not duck. I'm reading that. I should be reading this. Never worry about asking, asking a question that fits answered. Um, is the word new necessary? Yes, because it is used for in for instantiating an object from a constructor. It's this. It is a function, but it's a constructor function, which means if we want to instantiate an object from it, we want to use new. Kind of like we did with classes in ES6. It's a bit weird, but we'll 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 keep going. We'll practice at it, and we'll get. It'll click eventually. Cool. So, ooh, ooh, Catherine asks, what is the difference between an of loop and an in loop? And that's a great question. Um, first, I'll explain. Uh, an, a for of loop will iterate over the members of an array, and an in loop will iterate over the properties on an object. You'll see what I mean in just a second. <laughs> so many loops. There's a lot of loops. <laughs> and I mix them up all the time. You probably see me do this live that I mix them up all the time. So if duck, no, not duck. I'm reading that again. I should be reading this. If the canary has own property, property, and you want to add the property, own properties of canary to the array, own props. Yeah, let's do that. So own, own props dot push. Property. I think that's what we want. Oh, I'm cheating. Only change code below this line. There we go. So let's console log own props. This will look familiar. Let me not console log the canary. So the two properties that are own properties of the canary are name and num legs. So far, so good. But you might be wondering, wait. Yeah, Omran's asking, why are we checking for has own property? Because there's more properties than we think there are. Check it out. Let's console log each property. Y'all are going to be, I'm going to be surprised. Let me just remove this one here. So property. Check out all of the prop. Oh. <laughs> I was so excited. There are, okay. We're going to get to why. But there are properties that are, for example, properties of an object that are not necessarily properties of a bird object. It sounds weird, but we're going to, I promise, we're going to get to that in a couple of exercises. This has to do with something called inheritance, which I hope to be able to cover today. Thanks a lot for making me look silly, exercise. <laughs> there we go. Run our tests. Pat, pat. Cool. Let's move on. Ah, Javier, Javier knows. Yes. General properties inherited. Yeah, that's what I was hoping to show. But I'm sure we'll get there because we are about to encounter the prototype. So this is, a, this, this is our dog constructor. Um, it's got a, it takes a name as a variable, uh, as a parameter and it, this sets this name to be name. Let's console log, uh, beagle and it's got name equals Snoopy. So far, so good. Now let's say we've got loads of dogs. Let's say we've got, uh, let terrier equals new dog. 
Gustavo. Now we got two dogs. Right? Cool. What if down the line we want to change how a dog is the, the, the structure of a dog so that it's got a num legs property? But let's say, just for the sake of argument, that we can't change the code in here. This is where changing the property, the, sorry, the prototype of a dog comes in. So a constructor and just about any other dog, sorry, any other object will have what's called a prototype. Dog dot prototype. Let's console log this. Let's, let, let's take a look at what a prototype is. This is a property of the constructor. Did I forget to dot log? I did. How silly of me. Oh, there is a property. It is an empty object, but it is a property. It is a thing. And I believe most object, I most if not all objects should have this. Very sorry, folks. My screen just turned off. Ah, there we go. Phew. Okay. So an object does have a property. It is undefined because it's a it's a pure object. I would highly recommend um, to read up in depth if you're interested on properties. We'll get as far as we can today on covering them as much as we can. And I will likely leave you wondering, wait, what are our properties for? But in, in essence, properties make up the structure of pretty much of pretty much all properties. No, prototypes. I'm sorry, folks. Proto they're, they're very similar words. Prototypes make up the structural, the structure of most, no, of all JavaScript objects. They all have a prototype. Whew. Okay. So what we can do if we, again, if we want to add a, pro um, a property to the constructor, I'm so sorry, to Toasty Marshmallow. I'm I'm a mess. I am so sorry. <laughs> so every object has a prototype. Every object has a property that's called its prototype. And the prototype makes up the structure of all objects. Whew. So... what we can do is change this prototype to change the recipe, the template, the, the blueprint of every dog. So we can do that with dog.property. The prototype, I cannot believe how difficult this is to say. So, ooh, and thank you so much to Fabio. If you wanna read up, <laughs> if you wanna read up more on prototypes, Check it out on MDN. Oh, I like what Diego says. The prototype is like the skeleton of the object. Yeah, I was like, I was kind of going there with like um, uh, recipes or templates or blueprints, but skeleton, like whichever metaphor works for you best. That's the lovely thing about computers, isn't it? Um, it will, it'll, whatever works best for you to help you unlock that understanding. So what we can do is say, hey, every dog we make from now on will also have a num legs property set to four. So, so log beagle. And now it's getting a little weird. This is where things get a little bit weird. So the beagle doesn't have, so if we print it out, it's got name Snoopy. But if we call console log beagle.num legs, it is four. So what we're doing here is changing the property of the dog prototype, but we're not setting the own property of objects that are constructed with the dog constructor. Now this is gonna this is gonna take a lot of like, wait, what? But we'll get there. Let's do that loop again. Let you know we've got some time. Let's let's do that loop again for. Um, let property in eagle. Console log them again. See? 
ev- so the beagle does have those two properties, name and numb legs. But um, let's console log beagle has own property property. Now look at this. So name is an own property of the beagle of the dog object of the beagle object. But num legs is a property of the prototype, not an own property of the object. So this is going to take some wait what Ooh, I like what Imari says here. It's like it's added to the blueprint, but not yet built. It it is like it's defined, like it's defined in the blueprint. It's like, hey, just so you know, it does have four legs. Right? So it it does have the property, but it's not an own property. Javier asks. So if you create a dog by default, it will inherit the foreign leg. Ah, that's where inheritance comes from. Very good. You, but you can update it for the specific instance to two or three. Let's give it a try. What if beagle.numlegs is equals to two? Let's say it's standing on two legs. Now we've added that own property to the beagle. I love how Amy puts it here. Numlex is inherited because it hasn't been specifically defined for the beagle. Eon asks, it says, inherited from its parents' constructor, whereas the name Snoopy has been given to the beagle. And Sweat and Cookie says, like classes, and yes, classes, by the way, is syntactic sugar around what we're doing here. So back in the day, if we wanted to do fancy inheritance stuff before ES6, we had to do what we're doing today. But it's good to know how this works under the under the under the hood. Yeah. That's a lot to process, isn't it? So, <laughs> add a numlegs property to the prototype of dog. Phew. Let's run our tests. And there we go. Pat pat. We're not going to get as far through this one as I as as I hope today, folks. But that's okay. The rest will be homework tomorrow. We'll do the project. So, oh, look at that! We just did this. <laughs> so, like before, we're going to loop through all of the properties we got: dog, numb legs. We we know all this, and in our exercise, I'm just going to scroll a little bit. Add all of the own properties of Beagle to the array own props and add all of the prototype properties of dog to the array prototype props. So let's do that. Uh, for let property in uh, Beagle. So if Beagle has own property property, then we'll add that to the own props array. Property. Else, we will push that to the prototype props. Uh, prototype props dot push, not pros, props dot push property. Looks good, but let's console log that. Console log um, own props. The own props of the beagle are the name, like but like in the last exercise. That's its own prop there. Sounds good. And we want to check the property props. Is num legs. And name is the own property. And Prototype, sorry, and num legs is the prototype property. Whew, Richard says, recounting the pain of record collection here. <laughs> don't remind me. I'm, I mean, don't get me wrong. It was great to be able to show folks that I too get stuck. 
<laughs> so to the array prototype props. Okay, I think we're good. Let's run our tests. Whew. Pat, pat. Oh, I like what Ilioska says. So then class works behind the scenes and prototypes behind behind the scenes. Yeah, kind of. I would say that class is kind of like a, a wrapper around prototypes is how I would think about it. And folks, it gets a little weirder. So let's... Um, we also have uh, access to the constructor property of an object. Let's have a look. Before we before we do any of this, console log. Let's let's console log. Uh, let's make a dog. Let's make a dog. Let's create a dog. Const beagle equals new dog. I'm gonna do an old a dog. I an old friend of mine, Fred. So uh, let's console log that beagle. Fred. Beagle also has a constructor. Check it out. So every so objects have constructors as well. So far, so good. What about the constructor of an empty object? I don't actually know. It's a the constructor is the object, the uppercase O object. Good to know. So what do we want to do here? Write a join dog fraternity function that takes a candidate parameter and using the constructor property, return true if the candidate is a dog, otherwise return return false. So let's keep that beagle around. I think we're gonna need Fred. So we've got a let's we've got a function here, join dog fraternity, and it'll return true if the constructor of the candidate is a dog. So return no if. Candidate constructor is equals to dog, then we'll return true. Otherwise, return false. Let's console log join dog fraternity uh, legal. That gives us true because the beagle is. The beagle's constructor is dog. So far, so good. Now, I like this, but here's the thing. This expression here, it is a Boolean. So we could actually reduce it a little bit. Instead of saying if candidate, candidate constructor equals dog, return true, otherwise return false, we could just return candidate.constructor three equals to dog. Remember, that's a Boolean. Let's just remove this. That's the same thing. A little bit nicer, I find. Yeah, as Ahmed said, um, return candidate constructors, three equals dog. Phew, okay. So we've done the exercise. Let's run our tests. <sighs> pat, pat. Okay, we're gonna get, look, I've, Feeling pretty good about getting 50% of the way through. Ooh. Ah. <laughs> Jolene, you read my mind. Yeah. <laughs> Can you all? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so. What can we do here? We can actually change the prototype of a dog. So, for example, we've got if we want to change lots of properties in a prototype, we can go bird prototype num legs. We can ha also have functions, of course. But we can also, since it is essentially assigning d with dot notation values to properties to an object, which in this case is a prototype. Wait, let me let me say that again. Check it out. When we're doing dot notation on this on the prototype, what we're doing is using dot notation to set the value of an object, right? That's what dot notation does. So with dot notation, we can also set a value of a function. So what this exercise is saying is, well, if it is an object that you're changing, 
why not just change it, change it as if it was an object? So bird.prototype is equals to, and then we assign multiple properties to the prototype. It's a bit, hope, hope we're good. Hope we're good with that. <laughs> so in this exercise, we're going to take, we've got our constructor and we're going to say dog.prototype is equals to add the property numlegs and two methods eat and describe to the prototype of dog by setting the prototype to a new object. So before we do it with the object, let's see how we could do this. We could do this with dog.prototype.numlegs is equals to four. Dog.prototype.eat is equals to function. Uh, is it console? Yeah, it's console log warmth. Warmth. Sorry, I don't know why I'm putting in weird dog noises here, but you follow what I mean. <laughs> so we could do it this way, but what this exercise is saying is, hey, you don't totally don't have to. You can do it here as an object. So num legs colon four um, eat, and we can do it with our fancy function way console log, and yeah, let's go with from from from. <laughs> My old dog used to eat that way. Um, and let's see, what's the last one? Eat and describe. So describe is going to be console log. And we're going to describe it with the name. So my name is ES6. This dot name. Remember, it is the constructor still has that name property, the own property name. My name is this day, woof. So we've defined all of those. Let's let's make a dog. Uh, const eagle equals new dog. We'll go with Fred again. Let's go beagle.describe. My name is Fred Wolf. So we have access to that prototype, to that prototype property of describe function. Eat. <laughs> so Bavin's asking, where did we get described from? We got it from the prototype. Right? So that we defined the describe function on the prototype of a dog. Yeah, I, I think we've done it. I think we've done it. Let's run our tests. 50%. Pat, pat. Let's do one more. We've got two minutes left. Let's, let's sneak in one more exercise. Oh no, and here comes the, the wackiest part of all. There is one crucial and this there is one crucial side effect to manually setting the prototype to a new object. I'm so sorry. It's such a weird thing of JavaScript. It erases the constructor property. Let's see what that means. Uh, const beagle equals new dog. Oh, with a name, sorry. Uh, let's go with Fred. Console log um, beagle constructor. That gives us dog. Very good. Const dachshund. Now remember, this is after we've changed the prototype of the dog constructor. Uh, new dog Fiona. Um, console log dachs hund constructor. There you have it, folks. So when you change the property object of a constructor, it does reset the constructor to be uh, to be object instead of dog. This is a weird quirk, and 
this is where doing stuff like the cons- using cons- classes from ES6 does away with all of this weirdness. It takes care of it in the background for you. <sighs> I hate to be the bearer of bad news. So what this means is every time we change the prototype, we also need to reset the constructor. You can see that here, what we're doing. So to find the constructor property on the dog prototype. So when we change the prototype, you will need to set the constructor to be dog. Hold on. Let me let me erase that for just a second and bring back Fred and Fiona. Cool. So Fred's constructor is a dog, and Fiona's constructor is object. When we change the property, we need to remember to set the constructor again to be dog, and that way when you make a new dog after you've changed the prototype, then it'll, it, it won't reset. Well, it does. I mean, you're resetting it to be dog. It is very confusing. And again, MDN has, like, if you're curious as to what and huh and why and how, um, totally check out the MDN documentation. There's also great articles on Free Code Camp that'll help you with this. So we've done that. Define the constructor property on the dog prototype. So I believe we should be good to go. Let's run our tests. And there we go. Pat, pat. Good job, everybody. This is a lot. And for homework, I'm we're going to stop and go into Q&A now. I recommend for homework going through the rest of this and there will surely be a lot of questions so please do me a favor and any question you might have hit up hit up the forum check out the discord so group.classcentral.com for the forum go in the discord i'm hanging out in both of them and we will do our best to get you through this it is a big i I have found myself tripped up multiple times by prototypes. It's weird. And thankfully, thanks to ES6 and classes, we mostly don't need to worry about them too much. But hey, you never know when in your career you're going to encounter what's called legacy code. That is code that was written before ES6 or maybe just code that they didn't want to write in ES6 that uses this. So it's, I wouldn't call it essential I've been able to get away for a long time without having to do prototypes, but I'm glad that I did the work to understand them. Personal preference, your mileage may vary. Let's do some Q&A. <laughs> and we'll start with Richard's question, why? And I don't know. You know, the the there's there's a story you often hear about JavaScript and its creation and how it was created in 2 weeks. And I think I don't don't quote me on this, but I think the story goes that when browsers were starting out, somebody told the creators of JavaScript, hey, we need a programming language for dynamic websites. And so they created this in two weeks. I'm not saying that that's why there's it has some quirks. I'm saying some quirks might have come from that. Ah, uh, Gosh, we, we did good today, folks. <laughs> Diego says, it's always good to know what happens behind the scenes. And I couldn't agree more. Yeah, so any questions you might have, totally. Oh, Arax asks, what is a blueprint? Oh, thank you for asking that. Um, <laughs> I'm going to sound super ignorant when I say this. Um, a, when, you're, when a building is being constructed, you need a set of plans to know the schematics of that building. For example, where all of the individual girders will go you know those those uh what are they i don't know how to describe a girder it's like a a piece of steel that holds stuff together where strategically in the building that will go for example to know where to place windows where to place doorways how to control airflow and that sort of thing this is what a blueprint is it is a document that tells you the st the structure of that building and you can take that blueprint and go make another building an identical building because you've got the plans to know, okay, this is exactly 
where things should go so that I can make an identical build. I, I don't know why I'm pointing. Y'all can't see. There's <laughs> My window is right there. So And there are buildings. Yes. So there are buildings there. We need those schematics. Yeah. Oh, I like what Elioska says. Historically, those plants were blue since then. Oh, I didn't. Well, that makes sense. Those plants were blue, hence the name Blueprint. <laughs> you learn something every day. Ah, <laughs> oh, y'all are saying this so much better than than me. Blueprint is a one-dimensional view, whereas a completed building is a 3D version of a one to your plan. Ex Thank you. That's I couldn't have put that better myself. <sighs> Sweat and Cookie says, I learned ES6 first and was kind of struggling a little with that, so I'm kind of lost. I'm sorry, Sweat and Cookies. This is a lot of material, and it's it's hard, I find, to conceptualize this without going at it with some practice. And I would say, I would recommend, when you're learning these things, uh, sorry, 2D, <laughs> 2D plan. <laughs> yes, of course, 2D plan. Um, when you're learning these things, compartmentalize, that is, Put in a in a narrowed box those concepts. Eventually, those concepts will interlink. You're gonna be like, you're doing some ES6 and you're like, oh wait, yeah, classes. Weren't we talking about that when we were talking about prototypes? And conversely, the way around, hey, prototypes, Ramon said that they are linked to classes. And then you can sort of like, you know, uh build that learning in a module, in a modular way. Yeah. Afras asks, what is the purpose of OOP? What a great question. I would love to, and this is not part of the material, but I'd love to show you, like, the, the rest of these exercises will show you how we can use OOP, right? We were just, we got, we made it until prototypes, but if you go further, you're going to be able to use prototypes of one object to extend the prototypes of another. So, so... What I mean is, for example, let's say, let's say we've got a, a prototype, uh, we've got a constructor for animals, right? Then we've got a constructor for birds, right? So when we construct a, and, and that constructor bird will extend the prototype of an animal, will inherit from the prototype of an animal. So when you've got it, let's say animal has eat as a function property and bird has fly as a function property. When we create an instance of a bird, it will be able to both fly and eat because it inherits those properties. Now, this means that an animal can have lots of sub properties, which means we can have an animal uh, can have as a, as a, we can have a, for example, a dog that inherits from animal, but does different things, slightly different things. And this is another place where dry or don't repeat yourself comes in because maybe all animals eat, but not all animals fly. So maybe that helps. Whew. Hope that helps. Let's see what else we got. Um, oh, do you know what? I wanted to... I wanted to show you a little bit, if I may, how we do this in ES6. Now, remember, this is not related to OO, this is not related to the exercises from OOP. Okay, so we're going to define a class called Animal with an uppercase A, of course, and it has as a function eat. In those brackets, they don't need to be there. So remember, from ES6, this is how we make classes: console log. Nom, nom, nom. Then we've got class bird. And something that ES6 gives us is the ability to extend animal. Okay? And this has its own function that it in You'll see what I mean in just a second. Let's make another one. Fly. Console log. Swoosh. Flap. Swoosh. I'm not the most descriptive person. I apologize. So the class bird extends from animal. Let's make a new bird. Q. 
can so Mary can fly. But because it extends from animal, it can also eat. This is something that ES6 adds to, to do away with all of the, it's sort of like a magic wrapper that makes it a little easier to make these prototypes inside, uh, around prototypes. Hope that makes sense. Again, this is totally not necessary for now, but good to look into. So I recommend playing around with it. Okay, we got a lot of questions. Can prototypes help us to change the body of the object? Yes, we can, ex we can add more, um, more structure to our object. Absolutely. Oh, we got a question of... Oh yeah, so Mati's asking, could you explain um, for in and for of loops again? Totally. Let me, I think the best way to do this is with arrays. Because remember, I know this is weird. Arrays are objects. So, R. So let's do um, one, two, no. Let's do dog, cat, bird. Now let's say we wanted to do a four, uh, we wanted to loop over each of those. Um, we would do let animal of R. And then we can console log them. Uh, nope, not R, sorry, animal. Dog, cat, bird. A for of loop will it let us iterate, loop over each element of an array. The for in loop is used in objects to iterate over each property. But what happens if you accidentally do it with an array? Let's find out. Zero, one, and two. And if these looks familiar, it's because it's the indexes, the indices. 0, 1, and 2. So for of is for arrays, for in is for objects. And people are saying that much better than me. For in is in keys. This is confusing. <laughs> I feel, do you mean the, the, the this keyword? Um, as said, it's a, it's a pretty deep subject. What I would recommend is, and I'll put up some links to, to stuff in, in the forums and on Discord, to look into pro the property chain and the this keyword. They're from Free Code Camp and they're super helpful. I'm so sorry, Elias, because I'm not only lost, I'm also dizzy. And believe me, I, I mean, you saw me mixing up my words. It totally happens. Is there a way to manage permissions to set some property on a prototype to be modifiable or not, or every prototype is modifiable. Ooh, so what you're asking is, is it possible to stop an object's property? Sorry, a, a, blah, blah. see, I mix myself up all the time. Let's take this example real quick. We've got this constructor here. So we've got this constructor, right? Is What you're asking is, is there a way to manage permissions to, to so that we can block the property from being changed. The one that comes to mind, we saw it during the ES6, object.freeze. I have no idea if this is going to work. Remember we did we had object.freeze so that we could go so that we could stop an object from being modified. I have no idea if this is going to work. Let's find out. bird.property. Now, let's try and change it. bird.property.wings equals 2. Aha! So we can use object.freeze. Remember from ES6? We can use that to set the prop to, to block an object that is the property from being modified. What would be a more real life use case of for using functions as object properties methods compared to just returning strings? One example that comes to mind we saw during ES6 as well is um, the ability, let me just define a quick function here. Uh, object, pardon me, const dog. No, wait, a real life example. Okay, remember we did that temperature calculator? Temperature calculator. So it has a temperature, but let's just set that to, I mean, it's a terrible calculator, but it's a kind of real life example. Um, temperature in Celsius. 
is right now it's like five degrees here. Convert to Fahrenheit. There we go. No idea if I spell Celsius. Um, function return uh, this dot temperature in Celsius times, and I only remember this from yesterday. I don't know this off by heart. Plus thirty two. So temperature calculator dot convert to Fahrenheit. Console log that. Oopsie. That'll give us 41. Now you're probably wondering, okay, but what, why can't I just return 41? Well, let's say, what if we change it? Uh, I'm starting to regret having such a long name for this variable. <laughs> Dot tempera in Celsius is equals to 10. Let's say it went up five degrees. Now it's 50 degrees. We can dynamically use the object to get to use its own dynamic properties to be able to return dynamic data. Hope that makes sense. Let's see what else we got. By using classes, does changing the prototype not change the constructor anymore? Good question. No, I, I would say let's 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 do it. Let's let's play with it. Um, class animal. Um, name George. To there we go. Return George. Let's do this for for now, right? Uh, const bird equals new animal. Bird console log bird dot name. This is George. Okay. What about the bird constructor? An animal. However, just because we're using classes to define and create it, if at any point we need to bird um, animal prototype dot legs equals two. <gasps> Wait, never. Oh, hold on. Equals. There we go. Legs two. Oh, look at that. Catherine, I think you're on, I think you're right. You're onto something here. Check it out. So classes automatically make the property read only. The prototype thing read only. Well, that's handy. And I think it's because we want to protect ourselves from changing the prototype and by extension the constructor. Well, what a great question. <laughs> it start, first started when Ramon started mentioning something about I I know. It's 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 a it's a topic. <laughs> um Akrafs asks do functions don't not have types like an uh like like object oriented programming in C sharp? The answer to that is in German we have a word yein, which is a mixture of ja and nein, meaning yes and no. Um so with prototypes, no. But with classes, we kind of give ourselves a, let's say, an emulation of types. And on top of that, there's another language called TypeScript, which you've probably seen around, which adds exactly this, types to JavaScript. That's why it's called TypeScript. Totally encourage you to read up more on that if that's something that's interesting for you. Elioskas asks, can we use for of in strings? What a good question. So const stir equals a, b, c, d, e for um, let char of stir console log char. 
that'll print out each character. So yes, we can totally use for of to loop through the characters of a string. If we do in, it's the indexes. Okay. Afros is asking, can we do Cody in OOP format or procedural format? And I'm, I'm afraid I don't. Could you maybe elaborate on the question? I'm not sure I totally, um, totally understood that. Sorry. Um, you can, you can to in JavaScript, you can do object-oriented programming and procedural programming together because procedural means that each line follows the next one and object-oriented is, well, not what we're doing here, but it's what we can do in JavaScript. <laughs> Oh, Marie asks a great question. I always get confused when props are involved. Are they the same props as in React, i.e., can you store anything in them? They're not, they're definitely not if you're familiar with React. Don't worry if you're not. They are not the same props in React. Props are a, is an object that's passed to a component in React. It is an object made up of properties. So, yes and no. Conceptually, it's not quite the same. It isn't, so it is an object made up of properties. So it's an object of properties. So it depends on how you look at it, I guess. I would say no, but I see the argument for saying, I mean, it is, it's not the same, but it's the same con, it's a, it's a similar concept. I'm sorry, that was a very confusing answer. Um, when you pass properties to a component in React, it is chunked into an object made up of properties. Hope that helps. Ooh. Ooh, I'm behind on question. Diego asks, how can we extend using prototypes? Um, you will find that out by continuing with the exercises. Let me see if I can jump. I know this is annoying and I'm very, very sorry, folks. Let me jump ahead a couple of exercises. I don't want to lose anybody. So... Basic JavaScript, ES6, regular expressions, debugging, basic data structures, basic oh, Gosh, we've done a lot. And inherit behaviors from a supertype. This exercise here will show you how to extend using prototypes. You can have the it's a prototype of a pro. That's why it's called a prototype chain, because the an object, so an object has a prototype, which has a prototype, which has a prototype. Totally check out this exercise. Omran asks, is there a main difference between TypeScript and JavaScript? And the big difference is types. So in TypeScript, you can be very strict and say, this variable can only be a number. And if you try to do anything else, I'm going to complain. <laughs> Me being the code. The code will say, hey, 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 you can't do that. You try to assign a string to a variable that you said is a number. You can't do that. That's what TypeScript does. This is this is a concept called type safety. <laughs> Before you go run away, Ramon, is there an important question that everybody needs to know the answer to? What is the name of your dog? I wasn't lying. My dog, my dog, sadly he passed away. Um, was called Fred. Thank you for the question. Um, Christopher asks, how can I get fam get familiar with the syntax in JavaScript? Um, <sighs> It varies from person to person. So for some people, it's, um, are you familiar with, what's it called? Uh, rep um, small repetitions? No. Uh, consistent repetition? Consistent repetition. Do small exercise. You can do small exercise and you can do small exercises and like familiarize, familiarize yourself. The syntax, I would love to argue that it's not fully necessary to, um, Okay, one thing at a time. <laughs> um, um, oh, yeah, it's not necessary to to memorize memorize the syntax because especially as you progress in your career, you might do other programming languages. You're going to forget what the exact way it is to do. Is it a for of loop? Is it a for in loop? So knowing what the concepts are is what's really helpful. And folks in the chat are correct. I mean, that's why I was like, ah, that, that's the word. Spaced repetition, yes. Or in Spanish, repetición espaciada. Spaced repetition. Spaced repetition. Gazi recommends uh, flashcards can help. Totally. Ooh, ooh, check out this one. 
flashcards like Anki Droid or Quizlet. Thank you, Fabio. Yeah, Yuga saying space repetition. That's it. That's exactly the one. So yeah, small exercises, a website that I'm fond of that I've recommended a couple of times. Links are in the forum and the Discord. It's called uh, Exorcism. Uh, here, I'll put a link into the chat, exorcism.org. This is one that I like quite a bit. <laughs> Richard says, a matrix-type brain plugin. I mean, until that's possible, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so those are some ways that you can that you can familiarize with yourself with the syntax. But I would love to argue that maybe it's not something you urgently need, especially as you change between programming languages. It helps to know the concepts, but not the exact wording. If this were a, a, a spoken language, this would be kind of like, um, oh, I love, I love, I love, I love what Johanna says here. It's about um, thinking rather than memorizing. And I like that. It's, it's the concepts. Yeah. Oh, Carlos says, it's the same as learning when you, uh, your own language when you're a kid. Everything is the same. Hear or read and try to repeat it with your own projects. That's a wonderful thing. And Eric says, what about algorithms? Where can we learn? And it's unfortunately the same, the same concepts. Give yourself little exercises, maybe. Um, for example, um, actually, if I may go back, I found that um, basic algorithm scripting was a great section for practicing algorithms because it was giving you little challenges like find the longest word in a sentence or find the biggest number in subarrays. Try to come up with little exercises for yourself as way as well. Um, this is one way that helps me, like giving myself little challenges. There's also lots of websites like exorcism.org, um, which is open source, by the way. Super cool. All right. We are on the hour. So I will say let's um, meet tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to have – we're going to be doing the – telephone number validator project. So my homework would be to recommend A, finish off object-oriented programming, B, um, B, uh, take a look at the telephone number validator. And when we meet tomorrow, I'm going to bring in, uh, when we meet tomorrow, I'm going to bring a solution of mine. That is not the perfect solution. It is a perfect, it is a solution that works for me and that I can interpret and then share with you. Again, it, var it varies from person to person. So totally come over tomorrow. Let's try out ways. It's going to involve some regex, I suspect. And on Thursday, we're going to have another guest session from Feline, who's going to tell us how to read code. You will find that in Class Central's dashboard in the events. So classcentral.com, if you go to the JavaScript bootcamp, you'll find the events there. And we're going to have it at 9 in the morning European time. So it's uh, it's for uh, it's for both the JavaScript and web development bootcamps. So with that, I'm going to wrap it up for today. If you have any more questions, forum and Discord, folks, we'll do our best to help you and help each other, please. Explaining things is such a good way to learn. So with that, I'll say, Thank you all, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye now.